As America struggles with COVID, rising crime, and riots, it's nice that the teachers' unions are helping out. I kid. In their demands for reopening schools, the United Teachers of LA, a union for public school teachers, has included, surprise, defunding the police. And a shutdown of publicly funded, privately operated charter schools. Now, these go beyond what normal unions demand. Worse, they use this crisis to preserve their power by destroying those who won't conform. By trying to shut down charter schools, they're demanding the elimination of any competition and depriving de desperate poor families of an education that might change their kids' lives. This speaks to the real truth of a big American problem. It's not systemic racism. It's our systemically corrupt education system. It's the teachers' unions, led by leftists, whose only goal is to cancel competition that might reveal their incompetence. And so, at the start of life, poor students are placed in a system where no matter, no, no matter how many billions of tax dollars are shoveled into it, it just gets worse. The students don't stand a chance, and the unions prefer it that way. Yet charter schools produce better educated kids with a far better head start in life. You think that would be embraced, but the price of union success is student failure. Once we see the results of charter schools, we realize the cause of all our inequalities isn't racism. It's the scandalous lack of choices left for poor blacks, poor whites, poor everyone victimized by urban liberals. So these kids begin their lives in a hole, a hole that isn't a grave, but might as well be one, at least for their futures. Uh, Dana, how do, can a union make these demands? I mean, is this just basically symbolic crap? Well, I think partly it's that the unions are not serving the teachers or the students well. And this happens often when you have a union that wants to get involved in other political matters like defunding the police. Um, and this is really probably not the time to be um, doing an exercise in overreach because um, you've had people who have had to rethink everything, maybe their job, maybe where they live, um, maybe you know how they live and how they educate their kids. Many school districts, including, I believe, down in uh, Miami, they're pushing school uh, back. They're starting later. They're going to start online, and then they're going to try to figure out a way to get into classrooms. I think people generally want their kids back in school, but they are really concerned about safety. However, one of the things that this is also doing is make people think about how they educate their kids. And necessity is the mother of invention. And you have the opportunity now to say, wait, why do I have to do it this way? Maybe I could try it a different way. And you start to see the possibility of either homeschooling or little pods or people getting together. Now, that might leave behind, though, and this is a very real concern, the lower income students that you were talking about. So that has to be a consideration. But I think that this pandemic is going to forever change the way that some parents decide to teach their kids at home. Juan, what could be their legitimate defense of wanting to uh, defund uh, charter schools? Our charter schools work. Didn't you just say that? I agree with you. Uh, you know, and I say that generally. Yeah. Obviously, there's some charter schools that don't work, but I think in general, it's innovation and it, it forces the option uh, to be made available to parents to say, I like this school or I don't like this school. And it does away a lot with a lot of the kind of zip code segregation, you know, uh, where kids in better neighborhoods get better schools because they get more supplemental funding, more parent parental support. You know, just picking up on what Dana was saying, one of the issues has to be that if you have innovation and the like, do poor kids, uh, you know, oftentimes I say this with a sad heart, kids coming from single parent families where the mom may be an essential worker, a low income worker, and not able to to provide that kind of personal interaction with the kid during the day, uh, does that child therefore get left behind? That would have been me. And I think that, you know, obviously you can imagine how I feel. And I'm a big school choice proponent. Just one last thought, though, uh, Greg, on the opening of schools. I just want to make it clear that even people like the governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, a Democrat, Bill Gates, Nobody's a hardline, uh, you know, conservative. But these people, everybody wants schools open. It's just a matter of doing it safely. Parents are hardwired to protect their children. Teachers obviously have a stake in this. And I think we have to just work at it, but we can, we'll find a way. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I think we have tape of Bill Gates and of 
couple of governors saying the very that what Juan just said. If we want to play that, I'm a big believer that for young children. Uh, the benefits in almost every location, uh, particularly if you can protect the teachers well, the benefits outweigh the costs. As you get up to age like 13 and higher, then you'll have to look at your locale to decide what you'll do with high schools. And if they're not in, then you have to put massive effort into trying to get there to be continued learning online. The science is clear. Uh, our kids need to be in school. For us, our kids are going back to school on time. We've had great, definitely, they will definitely be in the classroom. Every education expert we've spoken to over the past few months has confirmed that in-person education is critical. We must try to include at least some aspect of in-person education for our children this fall. Uh, Katie, feel free to either discuss that or the unions. Your pick. Well, that's the scientific uh, path that everybody should be following when it comes to kids being in schools. But on the union side, it is just absolutely despicable that they're putting this laundry list of demands into the futures of America's kids when they claim that they actually you know, care about them and pretend to care about them. And it's the reason why a lot of teachers around the country have actually sued their governments, which have forced them into these unions because they don't want to be part of a political party and pay dues to those unions when they don't have the best interests of the kids in mind. In terms of getting rid of the charter schools, they want to do that because charter schools present them with competition and force them to do better. And they don't want to do better. They just want to be paid for not doing their jobs and they want to hold kids hostage mm. for generations to come if this keeps going on. Jesse, uh, the president of the American Federation, Teachers Federation, is going to be on the daily briefing tomorrow with Dana Perino to discuss this. I assume you will be tuning in and watching it. As always. Also, Greg, did you dress like a middle school math teacher just to do this monologue? <laughs> yes, I, I mean, did. Honest to I look, goodness, this you is a new shirt. Like my middle Where's school math teacher. Did you have sweat stains here too? <laughs> Chalk in your hands? My God! Yes. You also dress like Bill and I'm, and I'm Gates very bitter. with the glasses and the sweater. Uh, enough about you, Greg. This was a social justice shakedown. Mm. Did you have any idea the teachers' <laughs> yeah. union was this liberal? I mean, who wrote the demands? Omar. This is fanatical stuff here. No wonder the kids can riot better than they can read. I'm terrified of the teachers union. I think they're the most hardcore union out there, but I can't say anything mean about them because I'll be attacked for going after teachers. I just know that Trump just sent them a hundred billion. <laughs> I hope that winds up in the right hands and not into some pockets of some administrators for fatter pensions and bonuses. I hope that goes to the right place. Yeah, it's such a good point. If you may, if you say something about the unions, they accuse you of going after teachers, and then you're an evil, evil person, which I am.